look to see if the numbers are getting bigger or smaller. If the numbers are getting bigger, chances are good you're either adding or multiplying. Now if the numbers are getting smaller, you're probably subtracting or dividing. Next you want to get see how much they're getting bigger or smaller. Look at the first number you know and the last number you know. If there's only a relatively small difference from start to finish, you're probably just adding or subtracting. But if it's a big difference, we're going from 2 to 200, then you're probably going to be multiplying or dividing. Then you want to specifically look at the two numbers that are right next to each other and find out how much they are changing. How different are those two numbers? Use that as your pattern to see if it fits with the rest of the numbers on the line. And remember to reverse the operation if you're going backwards. So if going forward seems to be saying plus 4, going backwards is going to be opposite of that, minus 4. Let's try some together. So here I have some that I notice are getting bigger. I'm going from 13 to 25 to 31. My numbers are getting bigger. Now I want to look to see from my starting number to the last number I know, are they getting bigger by a lot or just a little? Well, 13 to 31 really isn't that far apart. It's less than 20 apart, so I'm going to try adding. You want to focus on the two numbers that you do know. I know 25 and 31 are right next to each other. So I could start at 25 and thinking that it might be adding, count up to 31. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. That was a difference of 6. So I'm going to try a rule of plus 6. That means every time I go forward, I'm going to add 6. Now, to test out if I end up at 13, I want to actually go backwards. And when I'm going backwards, I actually want to do the opposite, which would be subtracting 6. So I could think of it as some number plus 6 equals 25, or I could think of 25 minus 6. And I'm going to try that to see if I end up at 13 after I'm all done with this. So 25 minus 6, well 25 minus 5 is 20, and take away one more would give me 19. Now I want to see if my rule holds. If I do one more backwards line, so it would be a minus 6, will I end up at 13? Well, let's see. 19 take away 6 indeed ends up at 13. So I know that I'm following my pattern. The rule says when going forward, what happens? When going forward, I add 6. My last couple of hops are pretty easy. They're going straight forward. So 31 plus 6 is going to give me 37. And then 37 plus 6, well 37 plus 3 gives me 40, plus another 3 is going to give me 43. Let's look at the second example that we have where we're getting bigger. I'm going from 6 to 486, so I can see I'm getting bigger. That's a huge difference. I'm guessing that my rule is going to be multiplying. I'm going to focus on the two that I have right next to each other, from 6 to 18. Well, I know that 6 times 3 is going to give me 18. So I'm going to try that pattern. If I have 18 times 3, that's like saying 18 plus 18 plus 18. If you don't know for sure, you can always get a calculator out to help you. So I have 18 times 3. That gives me 54. Now let's follow that same pattern again and try 54 times 3, which would be 54 plus 54 plus 54. Again, if you're not comfortable, grab a calculator and try 54 times 3. That gives me 162. Now my last thing is I have to check. Is 162 times 3 going to give me that 486? So that's 162 plus 162 plus 162. Well, let's try. Indeed, it does give me by 486. I know that I followed my pattern correctly. So my rule was indeed times 3. Now I still have one line left. In that last line, I'm actually going backwards this time. And so since I'm going backwards, I'm actually going to divide by 3 or think about what number plus what number plus what number equals 6. Well, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. That wasn't enough. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 2, 4, 6. Hey, that's all I needed. I didn't need a calculator that time. So my first number is going to be 2. Now we aren't always getting bigger. Sometimes we're getting smaller, but it's the same idea. You look to see, are you getting smaller by a lot or a little? On this first one, I'm only going from 95 to 74. Again, that's only about 20 difference. That's really not that much. 
So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to be doing subtraction. I look at the two numbers that are right next to each other, 81 and 74, and I think about how much smaller is 74 than 81. Well, from 81 to 80, that's 1. And then from 80 to 74, that's 6. So 1 plus 6 would tell me that I'm subtracting 7. That means each time that I go forward, I'm going to subtract 7. But I'm not always going forward. For example, on this one, I'm going backwards. And when I'm going backwards, I'm actually going to add 7. So 81 plus 7 is going to give me 88. Now here's the tricky moment. I have to see, do I actually line up? If I take that 88, go backwards, so plus 7, do I end up at 95? And you really do have to check to make sure. Well, 88 plus 2 gives me 90, plus another 5 gives me my 95. Hey, that's what I wanted. So I'm pretty sure that my rule is indeed going to be minus 7. I'm going forward for these last two, so I can follow that normal rule of minus 7. 74 minus 7. Well, I know that 74 minus 4 gives me 70. I need to back up 3 more, which is going to give me 67. And then 67 minus 7, that's an easy one. I'm down to 60. On this next getting smaller problem, I can see that I'm getting smaller by a lot. I'm going from 64 down to 4. That's 60 difference. That's a big difference. So I'm guessing that I'm probably going to be doing dividing. That means every time I go forward, I'm going to be divide, and any times that I go backwards, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to focus on the numbers that I know. 64 to 32, and I want to think about how much smaller is 64 from 32, or how many 32s go into 64 if I'm multiplying. Well, I know that 32 plus 32 is 64, so I actually cut it in half when I went forward. That's telling me that I'm dividing by 2. I'm getting smaller, I'm cutting it in half. If I cut 32 in half, that gives me 16. If I cut 16 in half, or divide it by 2, that gives me 8. And here's that moment of truth. you got to see if the rule holds. If I take 8 and divide it in half, cut it in half, do I end up with 4? Well, yeah, half of 8 is 4. Or 4 times 2 gives me 8. For my last problem, I can think of what number divided by 2 equals 64, or probably easier would just be to look at it backwards. So instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. 64 times 2, or 64 plus 64, is 128. So you can see when I went forward, my rule was divided by 2. When I go backwards, it's times tool, but this box always is asking what happens when you go forwards. So I have a couple that I want you to try on your own. Think of those rules. First, look to see, am I getting bigger or smaller? Bigger is going to be multiplying and adding. Smaller is going to be dividing or subtracting. Then think about, am I getting bigger or smaller by a lot or by a little? If you're getting bigger or smaller by a lot, you're probably multiplying or dividing. If it's only by a little, you're probably adding or subtracting. Finally, look at the two numbers that are right next to each other, see how much they're changing, and then go ahead and use your arrows. If you're going forward, you're following the normal rule. If you're going backwards, you're doing the opposite of it. I want you to solve these on a whiteboard. Go ahead and hit pause, and then start again when you're ready to check your work. Hey, you're ready to go ahead and check your work. I can see that I'm going from 3 to 31, so I'm getting bigger. And I'm not getting bigger by a whole lot, so I'm going to guess that I'm probably adding. I look at my two numbers that are right next to each other, and from 21 to 30, I'd be adding 9. Now, I could go ahead right away and just do plus 9, plus 9, plus 9, and fill these in, but I really want to make sure that that's the right rule. So I'm actually going to go backwards right away and see if I can end up at that 3. Since I'm going backwards, I'm going to be minusing 9. 21 minus 9, well 21 minus 1 is 20, then take 8 more away, gives me um, 8, er, 12, sorry, moment there, I wasn't thinking there, then 12, and if I go backwards again, so minus another 9, 12 minus 9, well 12 minus 2 gives me 10, minus another 7 gives me my 3, that's what I wanted. So I do know for sure my rule when going forward is going to be plus 9. Now I can easily just finish those hops. 30 plus 9 gives me my 39. And then 39 going forward plus 9 is going to give me 48. Did you get 12, 39, and 48 for your missing numbers?
On this next set, you should have seen that you were getting smaller, so it's going to be either subtracting or dividing. I can see that from 82 to 62, that's only 20 difference, so it's probably just going to be subtracting and not dividing. I look at the two numbers right next to each other, and I figure out how much it's getting smaller. Well, from 82 to 80 only takes away 2, and I want to get all the way down to 77, which is another 3 more than I need to drop. So I'm guessing that I'm minusing 5 in total. I want to try to see if that pattern holds, so I'm going to keep minusing 5 all the way and see if I end up at that 62. 77 minus 5 gives me 72. 72 minus 5 gives me 67. And 67 minus 5 miraculously gives me my 62, which is exactly what I want. So I know my rule is indeed minus 5. When I go backwards, instead of thinking minus 5, I'm going to think plus 5. And I'm going to think 82 plus 5 is going to probably give me 87. Did you get 87, 72, and 67 for yours? If you did, you're ready to move on to your next activity. If not, watch this video again and see if you can figure out where your error was.